Good morning, everyone. For today's lecture, we will have a brief discussion on interceptive orthodontics. As for the learning outcomes, at the end of the lecture, you should be able to define interceptive orthodontics, describe the different procedures undertaken in interceptive orthodontics, define serial extraction, outline the advantages and disadvantages of serial extraction, and also explain the role of muscle exercise as an interceptive procedure. So coming to interceptive orthodontics, the definition. So it was Popovich and Thompson in 1979. Uh, who said that any procedure that eliminates or reduces the severity of malocclusion in the developing dentition is termed interceptive orthodontics. And uh, Ackerman and Prophet in 1980 also uh, said that all simple measures that eliminate the developing malocclusion is termed interceptive orthodontics. So what are some of the procedures undertaken in interceptive orthodontics? So you may uh, subject the patient for uh, serial extraction. You may uh, do or uh, perform correction of uh, the developing cross bite, control of abnormal habits, space regaining, muscle exercises, interception of skeletal malrelations, and also removal of any soft tissue or bony barrier to enable eruption of teeth. So these are some of the procedures you would undertake in interceptive orthodontics. So what is serial extraction? It is nothing but a planned extraction of certain deciduous or permanent teeth in an orderly sequence to aid or guide the erupting permanent teeth into a more favorable position. It is usually initiated in the early mixed dentition when you recognize any developing irregularities in the dentofacial complex. So it was Jelgren in 1929 who first used the term serial extraction. Nance in 1940s uh, popularized the technique and it was termed planned and progressive extraction. And it was called active supervision of teeth by extraction by Hertz. That was in 1970. So since then we've been following the same uh, concepts as suggested by these uh, authors. So what's the rationale of uh, doing a serial extraction? So it has basically two uh, principles. Uh, one is uh, the arch length tooth material discrepancy. If you do notice the tooth material is excess when compared to the arch length, extraction of teeth is indicated, uh, whereby you can guide the rest of the teeth to occlude normally. And if you see uh, any physiological tooth movement, you can subject the, the patient to selective removal of some teeth. Uh, while allowing the rest of the teeth to erupt or, uh, you know, while uh, guiding the rest of the teeth to erupt into their uh, natural uh, uh, spaces or the extraction spaces by natural forces. So these are uh, the two principles followed. So here are some of the indications of a serial extraction. So if you notice class and malocclusions showing harmony between skeletal and muscular system, you can go ahead and perform a serial extraction. Uh, if there is arch length deficiency, where uh, growth is not enough to overcome the discrepancy between the tooth material and basal bone, here too you may subject the patient for a serial extraction. And finally, patients with straight profile and a pleasing appearance, serial extraction is again indicated in them. So here are some of the contraindications. So contraindications such as class 2 and class 3 malocclusions, which have skeletal abnormalities. Uh, also class 1 malocclusions with minimal space deficiency, which can be treated by other uh, uh, techniques or uh, employing other procedures. Uh, patients in uh, whom you see open bite and deep bite, midline diastema, spaced dentition or generalized spacing unerupted malformed teeth such as dilaceration, extensive caries or heavily filled first permanent molars that again is a contraindication of serial extraction and also any mild disproportion between arch length and tooth material that can be treated by uh, procedures such as proximal strip, uh, stripping. So these are some of the indications of uh, serial extraction. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, serial extraction? So advantages would be it is more physiologic treatment as teeth are guided into normal position using uh, the normal eruptive forces. Also, the duration of uh, fixed treatment can be uh, reduced. Health of the investing tissues is preserved. 
and also lesser retention period may be required and uh, usually the results are more stable. Uh, however, the disadvantages uh, are uh, good clinical judgment is required. So no single approach can be universally applied. That is no proper, no one uh, size fits all or one technique fits all. So you will have to plan it out uh, way before. Also, the treatment plan is prolonged as you have to wait for uh, certain teeth to erupt and certain teeth to, you know, uh, naturally exfoliate. So uh, the treatment uh, can be prolonged over a period of two to three years. Also, patient cooperation is very important. Uh, there is also a tendency to develop tongue thrust as expansion uh, or sorry, extraction spaces uh, close gradually. So this is one uh, disadvantage of uh, this particular technique. Uh, also, the extraction of buccal teeth can cause deepening of the bite. Residual spaces can remain between the canine and second premolar. And also, some amount of fixed appliance therapy will usually be required at the end of serial extraction. So, uh, these are uh, the disadvantages of uh, performing serial extraction. So, you have to weigh each of them uh, and plan uh, ahead. Uh, so that you do not, uh, you know, uh, extend the overall treatment plan for the patient or the treatment time for the patient. So the procedure is there are uh, basically three uh, methods. Uh, the first is uh, Devil's method, uh, which is uh, C, followed by extraction of D and then extraction of erupting force. Uh, tweets method wherein you extract D and then erupting force, that is the premolars, and finally C. So the next deformity we're going to discuss is uh, the developing anterior cross bite. So this is nothing but a condition characterized by reverse overjet, wherein one or more maxillary anterior teeth are in lingual relation to the mandibular teeth. Okay, so it should be intercepted and treated at an early stage to prevent a minor orthodontic program from progressing into a major dentofacial anomaly. So you can classify this as dentoalveolar anterior cross bites, skeletal, and also functional anterior cross bites. So here, the best time to treat a cross bite is the first time it is seen. So if you notice a cross bite developing, or you notice in your first uh, visit that uh, you uh, the, the the patient has a, a anterior cross bite, so you can definitely uh, straight away start with the treatment and intercept this. Uh, particular deformity by uh, uh, employing various techniques and uh, uh, you know preventing further uh, uh, complications. So dentoalveolar anterior cross bites are nothing but uh, um, the cross bites in which you see one or more maxillary anterior teeth in lingual relation to the mandibular anteriors and these can be easily treated using chunk blades or uh, kettle lens appliance and also using a double cantilever spring with posterior bite plane. So these are some of the ways of uh, intercepting and treating these developing anterior cross bites. If you see skeletal anterior cross bites, they will usually result in a maxillary skeletal retrognathism or mandibular prognathism and can be treated uh, using uh, myofunctional or orthopedic appliances. We will be going into more details on myofunctional and ortho uh, orthopedic appliances in uh, uh, subsequent uh, lectures. So we shall not uh, go into the depth now. And also any functional anterior cross bite. This is a type of cross bite uh, wherein uh, the mandible is compelled to close in a, a position forward to its true centric relation. It's also called a pseudo class three malocclusion. This is usually treated by eliminating the occlusal uh, prematurities. So those are the three types of anterior cross bites. So what would you do if you notice a habit? Uh, a habit such as thumb sucking or tongue thrusting, mouth breathing, nail biting, pencil biting, so many things. There are so many habits you will uh, come across and you will need to uh, intercept and stop such habits from uh, having deleterious effects. Again, we will be having a separate lecture on uh, habits. So we will go into the details of each approach and uh, we will go into the details of how you recognize, what are the clinical features and how do you actually treat each of these habits. Uh, however, here we will just uh, um, give you a brief introduction as to you can use certain uh, kind of habit breakers. 
to uh, intercept and uh, stop these habits from developing into uh, a deleterious uh, habit or uh, causing uh, deleterious effects on the dentoalveolar or the perioral musculature. So the next one is space regaining. So this happens when there is early loss of primary molar. So with, it will result in the reduction of arch length by mesial movement of the first molar. And in such cases, space regaining can be done. And so this is usually again preferable at an early age prior to the eruption of second molar. So commonly used regainers are uh, uh, Gerber's um, space regainer, space regaining using jack screws, space regaining using cantilever springs. Also, molars can be digitalized using removable appliances with simple finger springs. So you can see the images on the on the right, which shows uh, uh, the regainers uh, using jack screws. So this will help in uh, digitalizing the molars. And uh, now coming to the muscle exercises. So these are uh, nothing but uh, certain exercises which the patient has to perform which will help them in improving the apparent muscle functions uh, as you know that the dental tissues are blanketed from all direction by muscles so uh, any muscle exercise will have a positive or a beneficial effect on the um, uh, dentofacial uh, structures so the uses are to guide the development of occlusion. It's also to allow optimal growth patterns from developing and also to provide retention and stability in post-corrective orthodontic cases. So uh, there are several kinds of exercises you can um, teach the patients. So one is the exercise for the masseter muscle. It just uh, is a simple technique wherein you ask the patient to clench his teeth while counting to 10. Okay, so this activates the masseter muscle and helps in, uh, uh, you know, uh, working these uh, set of muscles. And uh, there are some exercises for the lips, stretching of the upper lip to maintain a lip seal. Or you can ask the patient to, uh, you know, uh, hold a piece of paper in between their uh, lips so that uh, the tonicity of the lips is uh, uh, improved. Also, you can stretch the upper lip in a downward direction towards the chin holding and pumping of water back and forth behind the lips, massaging of the lips, and also uh, something called as a button pull exercise. Uh, this involves a button of one to one and a half inches in diameter um, and a thread passed through the button hole. Patient is asked to, uh, you know, hold or place the button behind the lips and pull the thread. So uh, this way, uh, the, the, the lips are uh, constantly working and the uh, perioral uh, musculature is uh, put into work and it helps in uh, training or uh, exercising these muscles. So these are some of the, uh, the techniques employed. Uh, how about uh, the interception of skeletal malrelation? So this is a little uh, difficult and it's a little tricky. So uh, identifying these at an earlier age is uh, quite essential. So how do you intercept uh, class 2 malocclusions or uh, how do we go about intercepting such um, difficult uh, malrelationships? So basically you have to understand what are the causes. So it might be either due to excessive maxillary growth, which can be again treated by uh, face bow uh, and uh, head care, wherein it restricts the movement or uh, growth of the maxilla. If there is a deficient mandibular growth, you can use myofunctional appliances. And uh, if you see uh, the patient has both, um, then you can subject them to a combination therapy wherein you can give them uh, something to restrict the maxilla and also a myofunctional appliance which is going to uh, you know help in uh, the forward placement of the mandible so these are some of the techniques employed for uh, the interception of skeletal mouth relationship but it has to be done at an earlier uh, age so that you can utilize the, uh, the growth spurts or uh, it can be done during the growing period of that particular patient uh, the next one we will be talking about is the removal of soft tissue and bony barriers. Uh, when a permanent tooth fails to erupt at appropriate time, its eruption may be stimulated by surgically exposing the crown. So there are quite many causes for non-eruption of a succedaneous teeth. 
and uh, these have to be ruled out uh, using um, um, radiographs and uh, palpation techniques so once you understand that there is a succedaneous tooth present so uh, you have to figure out how to uh, expose these teeth and how to facilitate the eruption of these uh, succedaneous teeth. So there are a uh, few causes which can, uh, few reasons which can cause such um, uh, a problem from uh, occurring. This is usually due to over-retained primary teeth, ankylosed primary teeth and the presence of any supernumerary teeth. So all of these can contribute to the, uh, you know, non-eruption of uh, succedaneous teeth. We shall now discuss some of the local factors and um, uh, how do we go about uh, intercepting or uh, treating these uh, local factors. If you come across a unilaterally uh, retained deciduous canine, you can extract the primary canine on the opposite side of the arch, uh, whereby uh, preserving the midline. If you come across uh, gemination or uh, fusion of tooth or teeth, uh, the treatment will depend on the root canal anatomy, size of the teeth, and also any other uh, associated malocclusions. Uh, however, the treatment options range from extraction, modifying shape of the crown, uh, with or without endodontic treatment. Uh, these also can be done as an initial stage of orthodontic treatment if needed. So you can subject the treatment, you can, sorry, you can subject the patient to uh, these procedures before commencing uh, the fixed appliance therapy, or you can do it simultaneously. Uh, how about hypodontia? Uh, the commonly uh, missing teeth are the second premolars and the upper lateral incisor. So you have to uh, the, uh, the treat by uh, closing the space or uh, maintaining the space so that you can uh, uh, provide a, a prosthesis. Uh, if there is a diastema present, then the removal of uh, uh, pathology that is and the presence of any supernumerary tooth or an odontome or uh, uh, a frenum which is extending on to or beyond the mucogingival junction uh, towards the incisive papilla. So uh, all these procedures will help in the correction of uh, diastema. If you come across an impacted permanent canine, uh, in such in, uh, instances you can um, extract the deciduous canine and then uh, remove uh, any soft tissue or hard tissue barriers so that uh, you can facilitate the uh, eruption of this uh, particular canine tooth. The last local factor we will be discussing is uh, transposition, uh, which is nothing but the extropic eruption of uh, one or more uh, teeth in place of one another. So uh, you might find uh, 1323 being replaced uh, by 1424 and 3343 3, replaced by 3242 uh, respectively. So under such uh, circumstances, what you need to do is you have to extract the transposed tooth and uh, uh, taking into consideration, of course, the other uh, uh, aspects of the malocclusion you're treating. And then once you have done the extraction, you can reshape uh, the existing teeth to match the tooth which is supposed to be in that position uh, so that you can achieve better aesthetics and function for the patient. So uh, with that I think we've come to the last uh, slide. Yeah, so uh, with that we've uh, briefly discussed uh, what interceptive orthodontics is all about, how you can intercept uh, various developing malocclusions, various developing deformities in the orofacial structures, and how orthodontics can help you do that. So with that, uh, uh, we shall wind up today's uh, lecture. Thank you so much for listening.